Hello, everyone, and welcome to Insider Financial Talk Stocks. My name is Alex Carlson. I will be your host today, the Editor-in-Chief of InsiderFinancial.com. And in this video, we will recap Monday's market action and discuss our trading plan for tomorrow. But first, if you want our free reports, click that link in the description or go to signup.insiderfinancial.com or sign up on any of the pop-ups on insiderfinancial.com with your email. After you sign up with your email, you can then sign up with your mobile number. Mobile is the fastest way to get all of our reports and it works for all numbers worldwide. Simply enter your country code first, followed by your number. For US and Canada, be one plus area code and number. Never begin the format with zero, it will not work. And in the welcome email, you will get a free copy of the Insider Financial Guide to Penny Stocks ebook. This ebook covers a lot of the strategies that I go over in my videos. Our ebook, our email service, and our text messaging services are all free services from insiderfinancial.com. We do not run any paid subscription service whatsoever, no Discord rooms or Telegram chat rooms. With that out of the way, let's dive in here, folks. Uh, well, stocks rallied on Monday. Bouncing back from losses recorded through much of last week, investors are looking ahead to key inflation data coming out tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. The Nasdaq ended up 1.5%, the S&P 500 up 1.1%, and the Dow up 1.1% as well. Uh, it seems investors are no longer a fearing, fearing the CPI report, apparently, as the S&P uh, 500 has rallied on CPI day in each of the last four instances. Today's price action, I didn't trade today. I figured I'd let wait for the CPI report. But look at, so this was Friday's action. We opened up here above uh, the, the breakout area here and the market just trended higher. I missed it. I should have been, uh, I wasn't watching my screen. I just put a mental thing that I'm not going to uh, force myself to do anything and uh, I wasn't watching. So I missed it. Classic breakout irregardless of you know people thinking people are going to wait for tomorrow uh we just had more buyers and sellers some also some short uh, short covering ahead of tomorrow's uh cpi data but overall the bigger picture is equities continue to hover near the highs after a strong start to this year but the bullish momentum feels like it's morphing into frustrating choppiness um, that's not surprising given that the, uh, P the S and P 500 is trading at 18 times earnings. Um, overall, but you know, I would say the good news is that investors are pricing in the higher for longer fed interest rate policy narrative, uh, right now. The terminal rate is now above 5.2%. That is its cycle high. Last week, as I covered in my weekend video, stocks had drifted lower. Worries that the Fed will, will need to remain hawkish longer than people previously expected. So uh, the Fed has indicated, and Jay Powell said this last week and in his press conference, that the Fed is data de de uh, dependent. So tomorrow's data will be closely watched by the Fed, and that will help determine <clears throat> if we uh, what type of interest rate hike we are going to see going forward and investors will start pricing in that accordingly. Uh, what else? Uh, moving on, uh, Palantir, PLTR, uh, the stock uh, is up over 18% in after hours trading as the uh, intelligence software company said it expects 2023 to be its first year of profitability. Uh, the optimistic profitability outlook was enough to re outweigh any concerns Palantir sales uh, about Palantir's sales forecast as it expects its first quarter sales to be between 503 million and 507 million compared to analyst forecasts for revenue of 520 million. For all of 2023, Palantir estimates revenue estimates revenue will be in the range of 2.18 billion to 2.23 billion down from analyst forecast for 2.29 billion in sales. Uh, CEO Alex Karp said he uh, a threshold has been crossed and this is the start of our next chapter. We expect to generate a profit for the current fiscal year, our first profitable year in the history of our company. For its first fiscal first fourth quarter, sorry, uh, Palantir reported a profit of four cents a share, excluding one 
one-time items on revenue of 509 million why analysts had forecast the company earned three cents a share on 502.3 million in sales palantir said its results had been helped by strong government sales and increasing interest in ai technology and that is key right now for those of you that have been following the channel and also knowing that AI stocks right now. That is one of the hottest sectors to be in right now. Palantir dropping that keyword AI technology uh, in the press release. So there will be a lot more talk about Palantir as an AI play. So uh, certainly uh, we'll be watching this one. Had a recent run from six to nine bucks, uh, corrected down here to seven and a half, trading at 888 in the after hours. We get through nine, uh, we're going to be targeting 10. Uh, so, certainly, uh, Palantir is on the radar screen for this week. Uh, next up is XPON. I talked about this in the last weekend's video. Uh, I said that I really liked it. It closed up 20% today. Uh, this is, they put out a press release last week. Uh, the company was uh, selected by Cube Series as exclusive supplier of lithium ion batteries for its ultra, -wide, ultra lightweight foldable camper. What I like about this one most is it's a low float, 3.34 million share float, and just a $16 million market cap. I talked about this key level here, 425. We get above that this week. Uh, we're really going to make a run. So certainly uh, watch that. Insiders own 50% of the company. So XPON is one uh, penny stock I like. Uh, moving on, APRN, they had put out a uh, press release that they're going to do a $70 million uh, uh, offering. Um, the company said that it was also using proceeds could be used to help explore possible business company combination. Uh, stock opened uh, at $0.84. Cents. Uh, investors came in here and bought the dip. So this one here was, I talked about this one last week. It rallied from a dollar to a dollar fifty, corrected all the way to under a dollar. We're back uh, here at uh, trading after hours at 103. Right now, APRN, you know, you can trade it, uh, you know, under a dollar, I think, uh, if you're looking to build a position, but uh, it's been uh, really destroyed a lot of shareholder value. Uh, let's hopefully uh, things get better for the APRN crew. Uh, next up, guys, is SRNE down 72%. Uh, the reason I'm talking about this one, they announced they're filing for bankruptcy. They are going to get the Q symbol and end up on the OTC markets. So we have a, a history of uh, Q symbols. I've talked about this on the channel, talked about this in the ebook. Remember to click that link in the description or go to signup.insiderfinancial.com or sign up on any of the pop ups on insiderfinancial.com to get the free Insider Financial Guide to Penny Stock. Stocks ebook. And again, guys, you get this Q symbol. SRNE will be SRNE Q, be trading on the OTC markets. You're getting this, <clears throat> you got this flush down today, down 72%. Uh, first day it, it, it hits the OTC that it's a green day. You can buy it. Again, not financial advice, uh, but history has shown that these Q symbols, uh, they shake out a lot of the institutions, a lot of the uh, traders that can't trade OTC and then you get a smart a lot of smart OTC players come in they buy the Q symbol and they play the momentum get a nice pop again these are bankruptcy plays these are not holds these are trades so again <clears throat> you can trade it on the first green day uh, the first day on the uh, OTC that it gets the Q symbol we're going to get some ner nervous uh, long still selling Typical red, uh, C-O-R-Z-Q was a textbook example of this. Uh, it started trading on the uh, OTC at four cents this year, uh, rallied all the way to 50 cents. Uh, we're back down to 26 cents. So again, trade it, don't own it, uh, play the, the momentum and get out. Lastly, guys, is a short squeeze play I wanna talk about for you guys. Uh, Citron is out with a tweet today on Wish. Uh, Citron is now doing the work of Mr. Zach Morris pumping Wish. Uh, hopefully he doesn't end up uh, like Zach with the cuffs on him. But for those of you that don't know Citron, Andrew Left is the founder and he's a notorious short seller. 
That is until <clears throat> uh, GameStop, when he got carried out in a stretcher by the apes and lost tens of millions of dollars. He's interviewed in the new GameStop documentary on Netflix. Now, it turns out he is pumping stocks. His record as a stock pumper is actually mixed. He was a better short seller, in my opinion. He did in-depth research, uh, uncovered a lot of frauds. You guys, I hate the tactics that the shorts use. I hate the naked short selling. But when, you know, they put out real reports and the company does go to zero, you know, I, I still pay attention to the, what the shorts have to say. Uh, you have to because uh, a lot of them have been right on. Uh, you know, if you listen to Hindenburg on Nikola, you know, you got out, you saved yourself a lot of heartache. Um, again, you know, a lot of the tactics I don't like, I don't like this naked short selling, but again, you have to, uh, pay attention to what they have to say, especially if you are in any of their stocks. But let's see what he has to say about uh, Wish. He said, number one, we were reluctant to mention Wish until we saw the Super Bowl. The Wish business model seemed terminal and then everything changed. It has now become the most isometrical opportunity in the market. Temu just had two Super Bowl ads and was recent and has recently been the number one download app on the Apple platform. The world has been reintroduced to the surprise discovery e-commerce model and is being accepted. PDT has done their homework, which now finally puts Wish in play. Wish is the exact same business at Temu, yet trades at a negative $450 million enterprise uh market cap with 832 million dollars in cash as of q3 no debt and an untapped 280 million dollar credit line which likely has multiple years of liquidity available this is the same business as temu with equal products and distribution Wish's new management is a team of former Amazon, Google, and Alibaba exec that seem hard to bet against considering the company's coiled spring position. New management has made many recent changes to the platform. Watch this video to understand earnings are next week, and we believe the turn has come. Citron will soon release a report with the relevant charts that the company has been showing investors. And he's right on point here. Stock closed at 87 cents. The company has 71 cents in sh in cash, uh, no debt, uh, trading at uh, 0.81 times sales. It's a 595 million dollar market cap, 737 million in sales. Uh, certainly looks interesting. Uh, we will go along with Citron. Uh, this one is certainly uh, has a lot of potential. And uh, like I said, now it looks like he's trying to squeeze the shorts. About 48 million shares of Wish are short. So again, Wish put this on your radar screen this week. We will be updating uh, uh, on this channel, so click that subscribe button. Uh, we'll also be uh, doing our own in-depth report on Wish. Uh, if we uh, uncover some new information, we will send out to subscribers. And guys, we're still on the hunt, uh, looking for our next big runner. Uh, for those of you that uh, our subscribers know, our last play was HILS. I talked about this over the weekend. Uh, was an incredible move. Uh, average, uh, we talked about it on Friday, February 3rd. Uh, VWAP on that day was 109. We hit 265 uh, uh, on Friday. So in one week, uh, potential gains of 140%. Uh, congrats to all that banked in HILS. We are still on the hunt for our next big runner. Make sure you click that link in the description or go to signup.insiderfinancial.com or sign up on any of the pop-ups with your email. Finally, Insider Financial and myself are not investment advisors. This video does not provide investment advice. Always do your own research, make your own investment decision, or consult with your nearest financial advisor. This video is not a solicitation or recommendation by Seller Hold Securities. This video is our opinion, is meant for informational and educational purposes only, and does not provide investment advice. Thanks for watching. Also, smash that like button and hit the notification bell to be notified when a new video is uploaded. Good luck, guys, and I'll be coming live to you tomorrow after the bell with the new video update. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.